All right. Uh, so, uh, as we have mentioned uh, earlier, we would be uh, uh, sharing you uh, the slides uh, in uh, a few uh, days' time. Uh, uh, and so, we would uh, like to proceed to our second uh, um, part where um, we were going to go to the uh, specifics as uh, you have attended uh, uh, the webinar by uh, Mr. Anthony. Uh, he was giving us a brief highlight about uh, the uh, IGAD harmonization process, the region, the process, uh, the, the overall system. And uh, now uh, I'm going to give uh, the floor to Mr. Yibel uh, Tal, who uh, will give us specifics on uh, the procedures, the uh, application procedures, the document requirements, uh, and uh, the administrative issues and management issues. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, Mr. Ibel Tal, uh, I'm going to give you the floor. Thank you. Uh, let me allow me to share the screen. I think it's disabled. Nathan. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I think I shared my screen. Do you see that? Make it full screen. Full screen. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay. Yeah, as uh, Anthony have uh, give us an uh, overview of uh, that harmonization and the history and status of uh, that. As of today, I, I'm, I'm going to give a brief on the submission and assessment procedures in a highlight way. Uh, as I asked here, I, my name is Ibn Tal, and I'm medicine user assessor. Until later, previously, now I'm an assessor. And I'm a, a, a coordinator for regard doing assessment because FDA is the elite national medicine regulatory authority for regard assessment. So we are going to see maybe member state he Antonio already discussed on it. Maybe joint assessment process. Under joint assessment process, we, we are going to see dozer selection, route of application, dozer screening, joint assessment timeline. Uh, it's also uh, discussed by Antonio. And some key performance indicators. Processing fee and maybe a bit, uh, a bit about JMP inspection overview and the documents prepared by IGAD member states. Maybe as you can see here, these are the member states I, I highlighted in green and red. The green ones are, uh, they have uh, established regulatory authority for medicine registration and the red one as a, because of the political issue, it tries not joining us yet. Maybe in near future, they can join us. Uh, that's uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, Sudan, and Uganda. They have established a regulatory authority for uh, those assessments. That's why I highlighted in green. Uh, on EGAR joint assessment, uh, we have uh, activities. We are going to select the dozer. After selecting the dozer, we are, uh, we are going to screening it. Uh, after uh, screening, uh, dozer assessment, including the selection of assessment assessors, also will be selected uh, from the member states. Uh, on the session of uh, assessment reports will be there. That means the primary and secondary assessors uh, submitting the reports, then 
we'll, we'll discuss on the report to harmonize the uh, queries or the uh, information sent to the applicant. Maybe after, uh, as, as Antonio said, after evaluation and approval of the product by joint assessment, we have uh, a domestication uh, uh, SOP, based on that, we'll, we'll, we're going to domesticate that approved product to uh, member states, so as a country level. On dozer, dozer selection, we have uh, uh, a document well, which states the product category as Antonio basically states with uh, at least 14 or 12 uh, contents based on that. Uh, the applicants will express their interest for joint assessment. Then it will be determined by uh, working group that's a medicine assessment and a registration working group. We will select the dozier based on that document. Then after they will, they will express their interest to apply based on the joint assessment requirements. Then we are going to uh, use a at least uh, the, that, that products should be used in the treatment guidelines of at least two member states and application should be also submitted to at least two member uh, states for uh, to accept the user to evaluate on the assessment, assessment of the member states. As I highlight, uh, maybe uh, it's uh, also stated or discussed by Anthony, the the dozer or the product should not have a market authority by any of the member states. So that means if the products are approved by Kenya or Uganda or Ethiopia, we are not going to evaluate the dozer again. Previously, we are, we are, we are uh, including some, some dozers which, which are uh, almost on the second or further, uh, second or third uh, farthers because of the shortage of application previously. But for the future, we are not going to include any dozer or product which is approved uh, any of the member states. We are, we are going to the only select the pending application at, on at least two member states. Route of application, uh, as uh, Anthony said, the, the first one is voluntary endorsements. That means if it is if the product is registered in Ethiopia, Kenya, or Uganda and Sudan, if, if the member says accept this, they can endorse by themselves. We are not going to enforce them. That's after we are establishing or developing a test and voluntary endorsement. This is most of the time it's uh, for registered products. The second one it is abbreviated to review routes. That means Maybe it may be WHO approved or prepared by for that. That is WHO collaborative registration process. And it can be SRA uh, during this, for this abbreviated review, we are, we are going to check the sameness of the application and we are going to review the public report assessment from the stated uh, Sturgeon Regulatory Authority. Uh, then we'll, we'll approve the product if it's similar to that of uh, the SRA uh, regulatory authority. And we are, we are going to also add the uh, administrative part of the regions or uh, member countries. The third one is a full assessment through, so that means we are, we are going to evaluate uh, those areas, uh, starting from administrative, quality, maybe sometimes uh, uh, then clinical and clinical letters, it's a full assessment and then it's, uh, also it uh, takes more time than the previous one. You can, you can see the, uh, this, these are the routes uh, we propose for regard assessment. Uh, then you can, uh, it can have uh, all the description standard. The series of voluntary endorsement, abbreviated review and the full assessment. You can see by yourselves and you can uh, you can have your own additional knowledge on that. 
maybe it's a better go to the next slide. On screening, as, as Santoni said, uh, FDA is a lead regulatory authority for regard to joint assessments. Well, we'll verify for a completeness of application uh, and that means completeness to the common technical. We, we, we all the members just agree that for the uh, document preparation, it's, it can, we, we accept the CTD format and we have also a guideline for EGAD. So most of the time, the CTD, for, the CTD is the same for all members, but all the eight countries, uh, that means the four countries that, that have the regulatory system, they have a different um, administrative uh, requirements. Uh, for, for the time being, I am going to uh, analyze some, some part of the FDAs because we are the lead, lead uh, the regulatory authority for the assessments and the screening and buzzer completeness will be checked by the, uh, the FD way. At least it's completed by uh, FDs. And in case the dozer is found to be incomplete, as usual, we are, uh, as we do as a national level, also, it can be returned to applicants and they can happen uh, again. For uh, doing uh, for EGAD doing that assessment, uh, all all applicants should apply based on uh, this. That means a complete CTD. That means module one, two, three, four, and five. If they apply in Ethiopia, they they should follow the administrative part of the Ethiopian FDA requirement. If they they are going to apply in Kenya, they should follow the administrative part of the uh, Kenyan regulatory authority then it will be screened based on that requirements. Otherwise, all other, other uh, CTD formats are the same for all member states. Uh, in addition, uh, we are going to use the MS Word format for quality overall summary or quality information summary and the uh, product information summary. That means we are, we are creating a product information summary for uh, it had uh, assessment that means quality overall summary and the uh, bioequivalence trial information forms so for those uh, those products who have uh, clinical data so B studies. We are using that, so we are creating a word format for this. Uh, so, applicants should submit in word formats uh, for assessment. We are going to use these formats. And the fourth one, uh, some 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 uh, member states they they accept actual sample during dozer submission, and some like Ethiopians who are going to use product color photo or for uh, visual uh, evaluation. Well, then we all member states agree that it's better to accept the color copy of, or the photo of the product uh, during assessment and. Finally, they can submit for actual products for quality tests. And for evaluation purposes, we can accept the uh, color photo of the product. That means uh, the primary, in the primary packaging, it, the actual product also, so for visual uh, evaluation during process assessment. Then the fifth one, that is a written consent form. It should be signed and dated. They should state the product and the status of the product in member states. Maybe when they submit it in Ethiopia, if they submit the product in Ethiopia, they can state if it is also applied in Kenya, they should state this uh, application status on the consent form and, and we will show you the consent form format and you'll see that that's how the license holders submit to the member states. It should not be uh, only in AFD, they can apply any of the member states, then they can send the consent form to uh, any of the member states. These are the 
requirements. Maybe we can we can discuss on during the uh, question and answer. Well, maybe on administrative parts. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, we all members have agreed on the CTD format. So all the submission of the user will be the same for all vendor steps. Uh, On this joint assessment process uh, for appropriate assessment, as Anton said, after accepting and screening the dossier, we are, we are going to plan for the joint assessment and we will, we will assign uh, assessors from the member states. Any, any application will be able to assess by two uh, assess, assessors, one primary and uh, Secondary from another member says uh, most of the time you know, we're, we're, we're doing that uh, from primary and secondary assessors from the those regulatory authorities who have established uh, regulatory authority uh, and will will make others as observer uh, for assessment. And then finally we, we have a QA that is Anthony is the one who finally summarizes the report and. After uh, the primary, secondary, and the discussion of the reports, so the QA currently uh, the QA is uh, is finalized. The final releasing queries or any information. Then, the f uh, after the first scientific assessment done by the primary NMR, we are going to send the reports to the second NMR. That means we are assigning the regulatory authorities in. Because uh, every time they, they will assign a different as a, uh, experts, then based on this assigned regulatory authority, they will, they will share uh, the dosers as assigned to the country. That means most of the time we have we have three assessors from each uh, member states. Then we, we can have more applications. Otherwise, when you assign two. Two doses for Ethiopia will will share each other, and from the three assessors, one will be the clinical assessor, that is the B assessors. Otherwise, we will share uh, activities. Selection of primary and secondary uh, will, uh, it will be done by the expert working group, uh, the medicine assessment and research uh, team. That is. Most of the time, we, can, uh, we, we will try to uh, assign for one from Ethiopia. From, uh, if we, we are assigning uh, a primary Ethiopia, then Kenya, then the, for the other group, we are uh, extending to Kenya as a primary and Ethiopia as secondary. We are exchanging uh, based on the application that we submit to the regulatory authority. The PU member states regulatory authors are responsible for nomination of technical experts. Uh, we are uh, again, we were not going to assign any expert from regulatory authorities. As uh, regulatory authors by themselves, they will assign three assessors uh, using their own national uh, regulatory procedures. When WHO or WHO listed regulatory authorities may participate as a technical observer or an advisor, as I told you before, Anthony is a, the technical advisor of IGAD. He is uh, uh, participating in the dozer assessment as a QA. And even WHO or any WHO listed regulatory authorities, they can participate as technical observer and as advisors, but they are not going to decide on the report or the evaluation. The decision will be made by the member states only. I think uh, it's a timeline for EGAT. Uh, Anthony, uh, overview on it. For, uh, after receiving the dozer, Within 30, within 30 days, uh, the screening will be done. But most of our applications, as all, all of the applications are already screened. And after, uh, within, uh, within 30 days, we, we are going to uh, 
Differentiating assessment and we will assign uh, on primary assessor that it will take on such days. Then it will uh, finalize by primary assessor. Then on 110 days, uh, secondary assessor should submit its uh, final assessment report. And there will be a, a post uh, clock for industry. That means when you, when you send uh, the assessment report, the time will be closed. Then uh, uh, responding to for the query, the time starts on the that, that means it, we will we will have a three three rounds for this. Uh, but the final decision will be on 210 for the those uh, joint assessments, 190 days, but uh, for each uh, or every member says they can decide on 210 days, that means a regional decision, then harmonization will be on 240 days. That means after approving by the joint assessment, uh, member states can, can, can separately approve the program, then the EGAD will write a formal approval letter to apply to other member states. That means after approval of the dozier assessment, there will be uh, additional requirements that we say uh, admin part of the requirements of the member states are not for the same. Most of the time, the language issue, labeling, so maybe we'll discuss later on question and NASA part. Do not use for it. I think we are, we are uh, based on the timeline. Now we we set uh, performance indicator for uh, for the ourselves such as state sets. We will measure that the screening, original plus assessment, abbreviated health. We will we'll try to perform as state target performance indicator. Do not use Maybe, as, as I told you, told you before, we will assign uh, as a suspect, uh, like this. It's a, um, where we are using this for the first assessment. For dozier one, we can, uh, as you can see, primary, if primary assessor is Ethiopia, we can say it's Uganda second, and Djibouti can be observer. For dozier two, Kenya can be a primary assessor then Sudan will be the second assessor. The assessment report will be based on the timeline as uh, stated before. Then you can say it's Eritrea as an observer, but Eritrea is not now a member. Then we can assign like this. So we can extend, uh, extend you like this, as uh, we see on those airports, if second assessor in Ethiopia. After assessment, we will present the reports for the, uh, the whole members. Then we'll discuss for on every every um, assessment report. Then we'll finalize by the QA. Then, as the uh, regulatory authority, we'll send the final report to the applicant by Ethiopian AFD. On joint assessment process. Marketing authorities, while the medicine recommend for registration. So, in the MRA, however, the two zeros initially submitted will issue to market authorization using national pro uh, procedures. Uh, uh, because after final reporting, if it is recommended by the joint assessment, the, the, the regulator who is receiving the first application can approve by. Uh, national regulatory national processes and they can issue uh, their own uh, market addressing suspects. For the future application, a guide will write a letter of approval for applying to other member states. But the, the first application can be approved by national uh, procedures. If I'm not clear, we are, we'll, we'll, we'll talk on uh, question and answer session and so Maintenance and such of uh, market authorization will follow, it will follow only the uh, 
separate national authority. For example, Ethiopia will, will uh, we are setting five years. Every five years, they will apply for renewal. Uh, and it will be based on a specific uh, national regulatory authorities. We haven't any EGAT uh, time for uh, specific national regulatory administrative requirements will be used. On product life cycle management and if post approval chains or variation made to the medicine assessment using EGAD doing assessment process should use the most current available WHO guideline on variation because we are not uh, developing a variation guideline for EGAD doing assessment currently. We will use a uh, non WHO variation guideline for uh, assessing any variation, any post approval uh, variation for EGAD approved products. Consent. Applicants should con uh, consent for use their dosage during joint assessment. Applicants may also con consent and uh, request the guard to share the assessment outcomes and report to uh, member states. Otherwise, if they are not given us a consent form, I'm not going to share a dosage to member states since it's a confidential document. The license holder or manufacturer should uh, give us a consent to share the dossier, the reports to the member states. Declaration of interest. Assessors nominated by a national regulatory authority will sign a declaration of interest to ensure that they do not have any interest on any, any application or any, any license holders. They can declare. And uh, Expert working group for medicine assessment uh, registration will assess the uh, level of interest of these assessors and determine whether they have no any commercial interest to the license holder of the specific uh, applications. National assessment process versus EGAD joint assessment, as I told people, we are going to assess jointly. The technical part of the assessment will, will be accepted. Uh, to all member states, otherwise the administrative part of the assessment will not be the same because uh, as, as Anthony told you, that is not a uh, regulatory authority to approve a product where we are facilitating the, facilitating the doing assessment of the member states, then the guard will not substitute the specific regulatory authority activities. So, as, as uh, Anthony told, you know, uh, talked about that, we are going to facilitate the joint assessment. Then. If a member states accept the uh, assessment report, they can uh, accept. But most of the time, the technical assessment report, they will accept it without any additional evaluation. But Administrative parts will be based on the specific countries. That's the previous slide um, routes so that you can see by yourself. We'll share the slides. Maybe something on joint uh, inspection. Uh, it also likes the uh, uh, dozer assessment. Inspection also uh, jointly uh, inspected to approve the uh, specific application. Otherwise, currently we are not accepting the JMP uh, inspection report from it, uh, uh, member states. Uh, as, as I see on the chat, can you accept the uh, Kenyan JMP inspection by other members or Ethiopian JMP inspection report by other members? We are, we are not going to use for this uh, regard to assessment pur purpose. Inspection and other assessment, if it is uh, conducted gently, we will accept that. Otherwise, we are not going to accept the GMP inspection from mem other member states. Assigning of uh, GMP inspection as, 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 uh, as that of the dozer um, evaluation, we are going to see it. Uh, 
three three uh, inspectors that's a lead inspector co-inspector and observer because most of the time we have the uh, lead and co-inspector will be from the uh, regulatory authorities who have established a regulatory authority for assessment and inspection so those who have formed any regulatory authorities they will be an observer for inspection Maybe on the fees and uh, application fees, currently, uh, IGAD will not charge any user assessment and then um, inspection fee. That's all the applications. Uh, application for user assessment and then inspection fee will be uh, submitted to a specific uh, or the application, who receives the application, the regulatory authorities so, uh, receiving the application. The guard will not charge any 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 uh, fees. Fees will be paid by applicants as usual. That means currently uh, all members have their own requirements. Then based on if they apply in Ethiopia, they will use uh, the fee regulation in Ethiopia. In future, maybe uh, the regional consensus will have uh, for specific applications will have the maybe harmonized fee and sustainability for uh, evaluation and the uh, jump inspection that was a submitted fee for, for uh, specific national authorities they will cover their own process. For, for those who, who are going to apply their application in AFD, uh, they can use uh, Right of service fee regulation 370 2015, not 2017, it is 2015. We have, we have uh, stated fees for uh, activities. Maybe currently we have a fees for screening or evaluation or assessment, and control tests and then specific inspection. Then you can refer the regulation, it's on our website and even. Nathan and Rabbi will share you the regulation and the guidelines from Uga and others. For a screening, a screening purpose, we are, we are using uh, Ethiopian book, that means for first time in screening, uh, 400 book. For second time screening, 500 book. And third time screening, uh, 600. And if it's not complete, the application will be rejected and the applicant will apply again. This is the screening is for all types of application. For evaluation, I'm talking about the Ethiopian fee because uh, as we are a little, a little country for uh, doing the assessment, most of the applicants uh, apply on Ethiopian uh, system. So then this is a fee for Ethiopian applicants that's for new applications 2100 that means application with b hello hello Walter. excuse me yes um, yes as you mentioned we, we will uh, share this slides so that they can refer for the fees and so uh, other uh, details so can you rush on the presentation so that we can have time for discussion question and okay okay session. is this yeah Thank you. This is a piece. Maybe QC fee, and I think uh, I'm I'm finished with uh, the fees. I'm sorry. I would Maybe like to, I would like to re re reiterate mm -hmm. that uh, with the interest of time, we don't have uh, we don't have a problem with time. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that was our fear first of all. The time, the time limit. Uh, that's not an issue for uh, uh, for the interest of time. We don't have that issue. So if you want to convey something okay, okay. that has to be necessary, it's okay, you can go ahead and convey that. Okay, that's, okay. okay. I agree, I agree on that. Uh, we can, we can, uh, it's better to discuss by the question and answer. Um, then let, let me, let me uh, uh, share this slide for the documents prepared by the uh, uh, work, working group for medicine registration. Then these are the documents that we have currently. Uh, some of the documents are approved by national 
regulatory authority here since more, it's more than uh, not approved. So we have uh, two hours uh, registration guideline for regard. Uh, expressing of uh, expression of interest as Mr. Product Business. Consent form, domestication SOP, product information summary, assessment SOPs, screen checklists, and assessment templates are uh, developed by yeah, those member states. The expert will be uh, working group for the medicine registration and assessment. Same. Let's talk. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ribantat. Um, uh, I think you have given us uh, uh, quite a specific highlight uh, about uh, everything, touching about um, the procedures, uh, the administrative issues, timeline, and uh, of course, um, with regards to uh, payment and uh, those issues. Uh, so I think I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, Mr. Uh, Abbebe uh, for us to uh, moderate uh, the question and answer via either via text or uh, via video or audio. Uh, any questions uh, that you may have, uh, please uh, forward us on the chat or uh, please uh, uh, raise your hands and uh, uh, we can uh, we can continue with that. Uh, Mr. Abbev, I'll give you, I'll give the floor to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ivantal. I really appreciate uh, your de very detailed presentation on EGAD uh, submission procedure and requirements. Um, I have received a couple of questions on this uh, issue. Uh, the first question is by Salam Aita Safa. When will be the, the medicine regulatory harmonization will be activated any time frame, she said. I think she, she doesn't know whether mm. uh, the expert working group is actually receiving applications or not. So can you give a brief on that? Okay. Well, I think Anthony was addressing this. Uh, when you see the history of EGAD harmonization, we have, we have uh, currently we have 50, uh, 53 applications. And uh, 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 we are evaluating about 14 applications. And from the 14 applications, two of them are under evaluation. And uh, six, uh, six of the applications are uh, recommended for uh, approval. Uh, we are waiting for the joint GMP inspection. And, uh, Four of them are on further requests. Uh, we are sending the request to we are, we are sent the request to the applicants. But the first the first joint assessment on February. That means face to face assessment in Mombasa. So it's uh, almost one year we start the joint assessment. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question is from Ida. Um, do you foresee any issues when it comes to individual countries to give country level decision after the joint assessment decision is passed? Um, I think it's about administrative, country specific administrative issues. Yeah, we have we have we have a guideline on, uh, for for EGAD uh, joint assessment, but finally we are, we agree that let's agree on CTD formats. All member states accept that. Then on specific administrative issues like fee, leveling, it was a difficult to decide on it because for, for, for uh, application and MP fees, even, even uh, the authority will not, uh, will not be approved. It is approved by the, maybe from, uh, by parliament of the, so, for specific administrative uh, requirements, every every member state will follow their own requirements. So after uh, joint assessment or after approval of the, sorry. It's okay. Uh, after uh, approval of the technical uh, documentation, that means uh, uh, based on the submission of the CTD format, we leave the administrative part to uh, member states. So 
when when we when we write a, a final approval letter, we will state that. So administrative part of the requirements would be uh, based on the uh, specific national register Otherwise, for the technical part, it will be the same. They, they are not going to evaluate the technical part. Okay, understood. Uh, so the module one, that means the administrative section will be uh, mm -hmm. taking part, taken away from. Uh, yeah, mostly, the mostly, yeah, mostly the labeling and the uh, application fee. Otherwise, okay. most of the time, okay. The third question from Mohima Jahan is a GMP uh, mm -hmm. approved by PBB Kenyan Pharmacy and Poison Board will be the company would get any advantage in terms of exemption of further inspection by AGAD. That means if the PBB or if they approve GMP, then mm -hmm. may EGAD harmonization will consider this or not? Yeah, I think Anthony also addresses. Yeah. Currently, currently, no. After we uh, work on harmonization and having establishing trust, maybe in the future. Otherwise, currently, to approve a product, there, there should be a joint assessment and a joint, a joint inspection. It will, be depend, uh, it will be based on the joint assessment and joint inspection. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe for sergeant regulatory authority, we are trying to uh, discuss on can you accept that means for uh, sergeant regulatory authority in WH approval even uh, regulators they use uh, desktop preview maybe for that but it's it's under discussion it's not yet decided okay, okay. I'm going to accept the uh, mm. specific member states uh, jump inspection and approval Okay, similar question from the same person is coming from like uh, if it's approved by ES East African Community, um, mm -hmm. maybe is there any advantage for EGOT? It's almost addressed by you and yeah, Antoine. I think there's no any possibility to endorse uh, accreditation from ES. Yeah, yeah, it depends on mm -hmm. a specific a specific uh, regulator. The last, I think. Mm -hmm. Andrew. Yeah, uh, and uh, the, the, so the fifth question, I think, from Raki, uh, that's I think from Bangladesh, is there any specific accreditation needed to getting uh, export pharmaceutical products at IGAR region? Any specific accreditation required to export to IGAR regional countries, I think? Any specific accreditation? No, no, no. We're not going to see any uh, specific accreditation, but Based on the National Regulatory Authority uh, requirements, that means a GMP inspection and uh, compilation of dosage. Otherwise, we are not going to request any specific accreditation. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question from Hi. What are the challenges experienced during the harmonization uh, registration procedure? Challenges you faced uh, yeah. when developing this harmonization procedure? Yeah. Yeah, currently we have a challenge so because of COVID. This, uh, we, we couldn't have any face-to-face -face evaluation. And most of the time, uh, uh, those sharing the dozer is uh, another challenge. We are using now the mednets, WHO mednets, but to receive a dozer, a complete dozer from the uh, license holder or manufacturer, it's uh, because to, to share the uh, dosage uh, uh, on mednet, it, uh, it's a limited time, that means 30 seconds or something like that. And it depends on the internet uh, strengths. And most of the time I send the uh, dosage to Anthony and Anthony upload on the okay. mednet. And uh, most of the time the application, the applicants, well, well as, as, as I uh, expressed before, it should be, QIS uh, should be in word format, but most of the time they miss to uh, send the uh, quality overall summary and uh, product color photo or actual products. This is a challenge and the other financial and internet issue. Yes. Okay, now, good. Um, and the last thing. Okay, uh, I think Astralo has raised his hand yeah. for a yeah, question. Yeah. So uh, let yeah. me give a chance to raise his question. 
Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Ivaltal. It was a very nice presentation, actually. So my question is, uh, uh, there are three, actually. Uh, if we start from dozier selection, you are saying that uh, uh, if the product uh, is included in the two countries of the two countries treatment guideline, it will be uh, it will be evaluated. But uh, yeah. do you have any link uh, in the EGAD website that we can have the eight countries treatment guideline? Because sometimes we have, we want to apply from here but we might mm -hmm. not know uh, exactly where to find this treatment guideline. This is uh, one. Mm -hmm. The other is regarding uh, timeline assessment. Uh, you are uh, assessing your performance and, uh, and uh, for full assessment, you have indicated uh, you, are set, you, are, you did Maybe. 85%. Percent. Okay. Maybe that's, that's, that's the plan. That is not uh, evaluation. Ah, it's plan. not the result. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought you already did the assessment and uh, no. you come no, up with it. But okay. No, that's, that's right. Bad. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is regarding uh, already registered products. So mm -hmm. uh, you are saying it is uh, on wheel base of the countries. Uh, whether they can approve the already uh, registered product if it is registered in three countries. So don't mm -hmm. you have any enforcement? Because, uh, I mean, since it is a harmonization, you need to come up with some sort of like uh, enforcement each, uh, as, as, as the harmonization. So don't you have this uh, enforcement to accept uh this this is uh, the other question maybe the last one is regarding gmp so mm -hmm. uh, you are telling uh, uh, telling us uh, gmp and uh, dossier assessment is uh, required so uh, just like what you did uh, in the country uh, is gmp a prerequisite just to go ahead with uh, uh, full dossier assessment that is my question. Thank you so much. Okay, let me start out, uh, uh, on JMP issue. We are going to uh, inspect the facility prior to dozer assessment. This is uh, it is a stem that of it uh, and FDA. That means for us we will uh, we will assess uh, dozers and we will uh, request for JMP ins uh, inspection. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I answered it. Yeah, correct. It's not a prerequisite. For the enforcement, for for those products approved by jointly, they, they will accept the technical part of the, uh, the assessment report. But if the country doesn't need that products, they can they can they can leave that. That means they if if they accept the application, they are not going to evaluate again. That's the administrative part of the dossier will be. Uh, based on the national regulatory authority. But ICAD will not enforce uh, any regulatory authority. But member states uh, agreed that we will accept those products based on our national regulatory authority requirements of the administrative part. So rarely when we select the products, they will agree on the products. So they will accept that. But there will not be any enforcement from ICAD. Because it got is uh, uh, as as uh, harmonizing these eight countries, but we eight countries accept the product select during the selection. If accept the product, we, they will accept the assessment report. But the administrative part will be based on specific countries. Okay, um, Astralo, did you get a full answer for your concerns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 okay, uh, thank you very much. So another hand uh, is raised by Ida, I think. Ida, you can ask your question, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ababi and Nathan, for organizing this. And thank you very much, Mr. Rivaltal, for the uh, uh, brief and detailed presentation. I, 
I want to raise two questions. One um, is just to have a, a more clear understanding about, uh, I mean, for example, uh, Mr. Ribalt, you have mentioned if a, a product has a market authorization in one of the member states, then in the future that will be uh, taken as a criteria and uh, you will decide uh, based on that whether it will be uh, it will be accepted for the IGAD joint assessment or not. So I just want to have a, a clear understanding on this. For example, this is just a random mm -hmm. example. If uh, we have a product registered in Ethiopia, but uh, not in any other part uh, of the IGAD countries, and if you want to proceed to register it, for example, in the other countries like Kenya and Uganda, uh, is it still legible to go through the uh, IGAD assessment? That is uh, one of my question. And in relation with this one, if uh, the applicant wants to, the market authorization wants to apply uh, through or from Kenya, do they apply to the uh, PPB in Kenya? and also show their expression of interest through that system or is it still mandatory to to apply through the EFDA portal and then mm -hmm. write the consent so i just want to have a clear understanding about this mm -hmm. um, and just so that i have the chance one more uh, question <laughs> it was about the post approval uh, variation that you mentioned mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. it's not a concern just now, it's on infant states, but mm -hmm. just to be clear, uh, once the market authorization is granted by each country, first IGAD uh, will write a recommendation later, gen gen mm -hmm. then the individual national authorities will be granting the market authorization. Then after that, uh, is it mandatory for the applicant to still follow the IGAD route or uh, would it be feasible uh, for each to, uh, if uh, the market authorization chooses to apply through the national authority, this post-approval variations, is it still allowed or is it like a written thing? How did you see that? I just want to have an idea. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start with the variation. If the approval is through EGARD, Variation application will, will come through EGAT. That means they, they will write the consent form for uh, applying the variation. So after approval by joint assessment, they will uh, give you uh, authorization of the variation to the member states. So if it is EGAT, it will be on EGAT route. For, for, for uh, variation, which includes all the uh, member states, otherwise, if it is a specific uh, variation, the, the, uh, for example, uh, the variation is a specific to Ethiopian AFD, they will apply directly to AFD and uh, the uh, process. But if it is a quality part, it should be through EGAT. I think the second one is uh, application routes. They can apply any, any of the member states. Uh, that means uh, four members, that means if it is in Kenya, they can submit the dossier in Kenya and they can send the consent form to Kenya and the Kenya can send us the consent form to uh, include in the list. So they can apply any, any of the four. They can apply in Sudan, they can apply in Uganda, they can apply in Kenya and they can apply in Ethiopia because the rest of the regulatory authorities have any routes. So, they can apply in her and they can send. If I apply in Kenya, they will send the consent form to Kenya. Then the Kenyans can share us the consent form. The first one, I forgot. <laughs> okay, the first one, if it's registered <laughs> in one country, but not in yes, any yes, other members. I got yes. it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Harmonization to, uh, harmonization is to, uh, avoid the efforts, that means uh, if it is registered in any of the members, that means uh, the, four, the four member states, we are not going to include the, that application for a joint assessment. Because the 
the one who registers the program will not agree that because they, they already approve it. They will, they, will, they will not benefit anything from that uh, doing the assessment. So we are not going to include any product which is approved in any of the four member states. So, but they can, they can any, any of the other member states, they can uh, accept uh, as uh, I stated before the, the first route, that means endorsement. They can request if they accept. They can accept. As, otherwise, for print assessments, it will not be uh, included in the print assessment. It is approved from one of the regulatory authorities. Okay, um, I done. Uh, are you satisfied with the replies? Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, we have answer, one more question you know from. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, one, more, one more question from Zalala uh, about okay. the application. What does applying out two countries mean? Do manufacturers need to apply in two countries independently and also apply for a guard at the same time? Or how do you explain this? Yeah, that means they should be interested in at least two countries. Otherwise, we are not going to uh, evaluate a joint assessment. If they are interested in only in Ethiopian market, they can apply for Ethiopian markets. We are not going to. That means yeah. they they should state their interests at least in two countries. Even they can apply in two countries. That means the same browser to uh, they can apply the same browser to uh, to member states, or they they should state their interests at least to okay. member states. Otherwise, if it is specific to one country, they can apply for the one country. Yeah, it's clear. I think they need to show interest at least two countries of the member countries so that yeah. it will be processed in the harmonized process. Otherwise, individual mm -hmm. country specific procedure uh, is preferable, I think. Yes. Uh, so, uh, this were all the questions raised by the attendees. And uh, for, uh, for uh, participants, especially, uh, uh, in Ethiopian participants, you can meet Yvel Talabadja, the coordinator of Medicine med Station, harmonization coordinator at EFD anytime. I think Yvel Tal will be keep cooperating with this pro procedure. Sorry, and, uh, 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 I think we have one more question uh, by Haile. Can you take Okay. Um, okay. I, I think, yeah. How do you see the trust level between the national regulatory authorities with regard to capacity of the assessors? And I hope this issue was was addressed at the time of uh, harmonization uh, process yeah. before the signing of the agreement. So uh, you can have uh, you can say something on this. Yeah, specific to us, not only the assessors, but also the the, country, the member states also they have the different skills and uh, on different sides. But most of the time, at, at least on uh, the last, the third uh, joint assessment, we also have a, a technical uh, training uh, set for the member states and other regulatory authority uh, assessors also. So we have, we have gaps. At, as, uh, at least the four member states, uh, we, we, we have uh, know-how and skills, some skills. But for the other uh, members, for the future, any joint assessment, we will have a uh, training also to have a uh, general knowledge and have uh, similar skills. We are not going to be identical, but we, we will try to harmonize uh, the skills also. For the assessment, after, uh, after uh, any assessment, we will have a presentation on the reports. So we'll have uh, a common understanding and uh, we'll share uh, member states' skills, experiences, and knowledge also. So we have, we have difference, but we are trying to harmonize it as a regulatory authority. And, yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, I understand the problem because harmonization by itself is needed to, to, mm -hmm. to fill this, uh, such kind of gaps between the countries. So I think uh, there will be continuous development on uh, capacity on EGAD yes. uh, as of yeah. my information. Yeah, so this was uh, on my part. Yeah. 
Ethiopian participants can meet us at EFDA as well as Mr. Ribel Talabaj, coordinator of the harmonization and sterilization procedure any time. And uh, we have also a few attendees from like Germany, from uh, Bangladesh, from Egypt, and some few countries. So, any uh, if you have any concerns regarding any further explanations on this harmonization process, you can write us uh, to East African Regulatory Professionals Association. Uh, or you can directly email us at info at irrapa.org. So let me hand over the session to Nathan for a closing. A closing. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Rapper, Mr. Rivelt Al, for this uh, comprehensive uh, review on uh, our topic today. As we have seen, everybody, uh, IGAD is a really pressing issue, and the EFDA, along with the rest of the member countries are working really hard uh, in order to make this uh, fluid and uh, flowing process where uh, medicine registration uh, as per the harmonization procedures is uh, uh, is implemented. So I would like to thank first our uh, uh, our first trainer or attendee, uh, Mr. Anthony. Uh, those who weren't with us uh, earlier, he gave us a brief overview and we will also be working closely with him in the future. Uh, and secondly, Mr. Rivaltal, um, for giving us such a specific information about uh, the, uh, the, the EGAD process. Uh, uh, so I would like to thank him as well. And I also like to thank Mr. Abbeba, he's also one of the uh, members, as uh, Mr. Rivaltal is uh, one of the members of uh, East Africa uh, Regulatory Affairs Professional Association. Um, and also, I'd like to thank the rest of you who have joined us uh, and those of you who have given us questions, who are trying to challenge us in order to, uh, uh, you know, grow in, in terms of uh, the regulatory uh, um, perspective. Um, as Mr. Abbeva said, um, uh, our uh, association is called the Regulatory Affairs Professional Association. Uh, please, uh, if you have any questions regarding not only uh, uh, our topic today, but anything uh, related to uh, uh, regulation of medicines and food, please feel free to contact us in any of our platforms with our websites. We have our website, uh, we can comment on that. We have our LinkedIn and Facebook sites, as well as our email, uh, which is info at irapa.org. You can have or you can ask us any queries. In the future, we will uh, uh, like to prepare uh, formal training. Uh, as we have mentioned uh, before, uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, this week, we are going to prepare a, a, a lengthy uh, training about this topic, uh, but it has been postponed, but we will uh, like to revisit it again because there are uh, many people who are interested in uh, this topic particularly because it's a pressing issue not only in the East African region, but uh, in uh, the continent and uh, generally uh, uh, in the world as well. So um, uh, in the future, we would communicate with you uh, about the future prospects of uh, this, uh, this training and other trainings. Uh, uh, you can send us your emails and contact information. Uh, and once we have that, we'll communicate with you about uh, what we will have uh, in line next. So I thank everyone uh, for participating and uh, we will uh, see you soon. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah.